Now, this is John the Baptist. And he said, every valley shall be filled. He's talking to like the Pharisees and stuff. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough way shall be made smooth. Now, what he was saying was, every, he was getting ready to tell them how that it's getting ready to happen this way. There's not going to be the high places and the low places with God. Everything's going to be made smooth. All the crooked things are going to be made straight. He was saying, basically, with God, everybody's going to be the same now. You see, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they thought, well, they're Abraham's descendants. And they, they had a right to better things than, the, than, the, than those old Gentiles did. Than the Samaritans did. Than the Greeks did. They were Abraham's children. They were descendants of Abraham. They were like up high. John the Baptist says, now everything is leveling out. Everything is leveling out. Another place, he said, he said, even these rocks, these stones. And he wasn't talking about stones. He was talking about people. He was talking about people that were not Jewish people. The Bible calls us stones, living stones. God called Peter a stone. He said, even these stones I'll, I'll cause to, to rise up and praise me. So here, John the Baptist said, he said, and all flesh, say all flesh. So he wasn't talking about, he was talking about those men, he was talking about all people, all flesh. That word and is Greek word kei. It literally links those two verses together. In other words, all those things he was talking about there, he was talking about people. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God, the deliverance of God. Amen. All people. Yes. In other words, now it's not just the Jewish people. Jesus said that the law and the prophets were until John the Baptist. Now this is John the Baptist teaching that now everything's changed. The kingdom of God is being ushered in. Amen. We are in the kingdom right now. Yes. We're in the kingdom of God. If we're serving God, if we're living for God, if we're obeying Jesus. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then say he to the multitudes that came forth to be baptized of him. O generations of vipers, and he's still talking to these Pharisees. O generations of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth their fruits. Bring forth therefore fruits. That means works. Worthy of repentance. Bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance. Now, Jesus said, talking about the Pharisees and religious leaders, he said, watch their works by the works you shall know them. Yes. The life they live, you shall know them. Later, on the apostle Paul said, consider those that work among you and consider their lifestyles. That's right. If people are not living right, then they're not right. Come on. Come on. Not right with God. We need, if they're not right with God, they're not right to receive from them. Come on. Because whatever we whatever we receive from, they need to be living right if we're going to receive from them. Amen. Because otherwise, it will contaminate. They may preach a true message, but if they're living evil, that message gets corrupted by their lifestyle. Amen. Sure does. The, God won't pour His anointing into an unclean vessel. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, that's another story. I'll talk to you later. Bring forth their fruits worthy of repentance and begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid to the root of the trees. And he's still talking about people. Every tree which bringeth forth not fruit that is good is hewn down and cast into the fire. Now Jesus said the same thing in uh, uh, in. Uh, John chapter 15. He said that he was the vine and we're the branches. He said every vine that does not produce fruit, the father is the husband, he will cut them off and throw them in the fire. Yep. We're the vines. We need to follow God. We need to obey God. Yes, thank you. We need to do what God says. Glory to you. Thank you. And the people asked him saying, what shall we do then? What shall we do then? And he answered and said to them, he that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat or food, let him do likewise. Notice, if you got extra food and there's somebody in need, 
You should be giving that food to them Absolutely. and helping them. So that's that's walking in love, folks. Yes. That's walking in love. Amen. Lord. Then came the publicans. Now, they were the most hated people. The publicans were the tax collectors. They were the most hated people. You know, Matthew was a publican. He was a tax collector. Now, they derided Jesus. The Pharisees did for eating with tax, eating with sinners. He, he, he saved prostitutes. He was eating with them. And he was eating with tax collectors. But they'd been delivered. They'd been set free. they made Jesus Lord of their lives. Come on. But they hated him. Just because, because they hated those kind of people. But the, they didn't see his deliverance. They didn't see that he made, he made them a new creation in him. They didn't see that he set them free from their old life. But here John the Baptist telling them. So the tax collectors come to him. He says, what do we should we do to be baptized? He said, and, and the tax collectors, he, and he said unto them, exact no more than which is appointed you. You see, they went when they went to collect the taxes, the tax collectors, they may owe $100. They say, you owe $200. They did it and what took the extra $100 and put it in their pockets. They all became rich by doing that. There's like the chief publicans. They got kickbacks from all the other publicans. So there's a chief publican called uh, Zacchaeus. The Bible says that he went up into it. He was a short man, so he went up into a sycamore tree to see the Lord when he was passing by. And Jesus looked up at him and he said, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house to eat. Amen. The Bible says when Jesus walked into his house, he said, Lord, he said, I know I've been doing wrong. He said, I'm going to return back sevenfold. I think it was sevenfold of everything I stole from people. Was that what it was, sevenfold? Or it was more than what he had taken. And Jesus said these words, and I think they're very important. Jesus said, this day has salvation come, come into this house. house. Yes. Why? Because he truly repented of his sin. Repentance is necessary for salvation. Amen. No salvation without repentance. Repentance doesn't mean, I'm sorry. Repentance means, I'm sorry and I'm going to do what's right and I'm going to change. I'm, I'm not going to do like I did before. I'm going to, I'm going to make amends by it, if at all possible. Amen. Now sometimes we can't possibly do it. But when you can possibly do it, do it. Amen. When I was just a kid... In second grade, uh, there was a good friend of mine. His name was John Nimfrey. He wasn't a friend of mine at that time. He was in my grade, though. and uh, But he became finally a good friend of mine. But he had this pencil sharpener that I coveted. I coveted it. I wanted it so bad that I, want, that I took it. I ended up stealing it. It was like a silver, a little, one of those little, little, remember those little square pencil sharpeners? Yeah. He had this beautiful silver pencil sharpener. And I coveted that thing. And so he was away from his guests. And nobody was around. I stole it. That pencil sharpener. And I, I, I wasn't even a Christian yet. But I felt so guilty. That the next day when nobody was around. I put it back on his desk. <laughs> and and, and I, I felt guilty for that a lot of my life. I mean. Like, like here, here a few years back. <clears throat> a few years back I was doing. I, I was asked to do the Thanksgiving uh, sermon. The, the Thanksgiving community service. And so I, I, I said within myself, well, I, next time I see John, I'm going to apologize for that. Just that, you know, I didn't put it back the next day, but I, but I still felt guilty. And so I want to tell him I'm sorry for that. You know what? I saw him at that, at that community service. And I walked up to him and I said, John, and he, he remembered me. And I said, I said, you remember in second grade? He said, I don't even remember that. I told him, I stole that little pencil sharpener of yours. I said, I did put it back like the next day, but, but I stole it. And I felt guilty about that ever since. If we can make amends, we need to do that. He said, brother, I forgive you. I said, I don't even remember that. <laughs> well, I needed that for me. I, I, had, I, had, I had went into a gas station just a few weeks ago. And, and I had, and I had, I had thought I had paid for something, and then, then at the end of the deal, it said something like, like uh, it will only let me put five dollars in, and, and it said, 
I, I forgot to think about it after I left it because I could only put five bucks in. But I put my card in and everything and said, would you like a receipt and all this? And so, so anyhow, so anyhow, I left and later I, I thought about it. I thought, maybe somebody prepaid for some gas. And I, I stole their gas. I said, I, I had no idea. So I went back to that gas station and I said, I said, it was here, it was here at the Casey's here in Excelsior Springs. I told them, I said, I don't know if I stole somebody's gas, but I just want you, I can give them my phone number. I said, if you come up short, I said, because I want, I want to pay for that if I haven't paid for it. I said, give me a call. They said, I can't believe you even came back for that. <laughs> it was only five bucks, but I, five bucks is five bucks. Yeah. I don't want to have a clear conscience. We need to have a clear conscience. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Paul. Amen. Verse 14 says, And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? He said to them, Do no violence to no do violence to no man. Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your own wages. You see, they've been they've been beating people up and stealing their money and accusing them falsely to get money out of them because they weren't content with their wages. So he said, just be content with your own wages and quit beating people up and stealing from them and falsely accusing them. There's people who do stuff like that. Well, he, he just knew he was a prophet of God. So he knew what their problems was. As the people were in expectation, all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not. John answered, saying unto them all, I am he baptized you with water unto repentance, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchets of which shoes I am not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. We all know, like the fire is the tongues. On the day of Pentecost, there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the tongues is the fire. The tongues is the fire. Amen. The tongues is the fire. When I was a, when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, we had a guy come to our church. And I, we, we had like, when, when I was 12 years old, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. And by the time I was 14 years old, I was praying before God when I was 14 years old in 1970. And the Lord spoke to me clearly and called me to preach the gospel. And uh, after that, within a couple of years after that, uh, probably by the time I was 15, we had a guy come to our church. And he said, and he said if, you will, if, you will, if you have a problem with sin, with your flesh, with sin... He said, just pray in tongues. And so I started, you know, the, my, that was when puberty starts kicking in. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> and so like, so like my flesh is starting to rise up. And so, so I start talking in tongues a lot. Every day I was talking in tongues a lot. Every day. And it did help me to, to resist sin. But then what happened is the gifts of the Spirit started manifesting in my life. Later on in my life, the Lord spoke to me. He said this. He said, you remember back there when you were a teenager and the gifts of the Spirit started manifesting? He told me, now, now the tongues is not the power. The Holy Ghost is the power. He said, but the Holy Ghost, it's like a gallon of gas. He said, it's like you think of a gallon of gasoline. There's so many BTUs in a gallon of gasoline. However, there has to be have to put fire to that gasoline. For it, to, for it to explode with power. He said the tongues is the fire. The more you pray in tongues, the more the gifts of the Spirit will be able to manifest in your life because the gifts of the Spirit are the, are the doomless, miraculous power that manifests in our lives. So if you want the, the gifts of the Spirit to be manifesting in your life, pray in <coughs> tongues a lot. And then you're more sensitive to the voice of the Spirit to be led by the Spirit. And also, it manifests the gifts of the Spirit in your life. Amen. And so, so I pray in tongues a lot still, every day. I it's just something I do. I mean, sometimes, like when we're in the ministerial meeting today, I'm under my breath. I'm just speaking in tongues real quiet while, while 